All right, it looks like we're at the top of the hour. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone out to this uh, webinar on Microfocus Enterprise Messaging. My name is Q Mangus. I'm a Product Marketing Manager here at Microfocus, and we're joined by Wes Heaps, also a Product Marketing Manager here. Um, today, we're going to be talking about Microfocus Enterprise Messaging, this new and exciting product that we have to offer you. Um, a few things before we get started that I wanted to make mention of. If you have questions, we're going to have some time for a question and answer, so feel free to put those through in the question panel there in uh, in the GoTo webinar, and we'll get to them as as we go. Also, this webinar is being recorded, so if you want to share it or go back and review it, um, you'll be getting an email shortly with. Um, with the webinar recording. So once again, I'd like to thank everyone for being here. We're excited to bring you this topic and, and uh, show you a little bit about uh, this new offering that we have for Microfocus. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, turn it over to begin with, with Wes. Uh, he's going to kick it off, and then uh, uh, I'll take over and show some things as well. So uh, Wes, go ahead and, uh, and begin. Yes. So welcome, everyone. Um, we're going to start off with discovering the new company. So. A lot of you are, are traditional um, Novell customers, have been through the microfocus transition. Uh, maybe you came in from Guava and, and are now part of the microfocus uh, community, or, or maybe you're uh, new and came in with the, the acquisition of HPE. But we wanted to introduce everybody to the new company. So this new combined company, you know, we're kind of built on stability, uh, always doing acquisitions and, and innovating our products. We come from two different communities here, the Microfocus community, which is really built on COBOL and has been around for 40 years. And then, of course, we have the, the Hewlett Packard Enterprise, who's kind of built on network management and data protection, and, and they've been around for 30 years. And of course, with all of during that time, they've, they've constantly been acquiring different types of companies. You can kind of see uh, what's happened over the last 40 years of the kinds of companies that they've uh, acquired. So let's just talk about where Microfocus was in 2011. So at that point, they were generating about $436 million in revenue and had a market cap of 834. Well, over the next couple of years, things really accelerated. So through acquisitions of the Attachmate Group and Novell and NetIQ and SUSA and Serena, you know, they've grown 700% all the way up uh, to several billion dollars. And then with the acquisition, you can see that we've even grown more. And now that we have a market cap of, of around that $13 billion. So HPE software by themselves, number 12, Microfocus was down there around uh, number 28, and then the combined company now is number seven or the seventh largest pure play software company in the world. So when you're, when you're dealing with Microfocus, you're dealing with a big name, a very stable company, and, and a very large company now. And so we want to introduce everybody to what our mission is. And that mission is that we provide our customers with the best-in-class portfolio of enterprise scalable software with analytics built in. And we're putting our customers at the center of that innovation, and we build those high-quality products that, you know, you can really rely on and that our teams can be proud of. Along that line, we want to, you know, discover some of the new and what's happening in this portfolio. So let's talk about the collaboration space just for a second. So there, there is an industry trend that's kind of saying that maybe collaboration is passe, but all the data that, that we have is that email is alive and well, and the collaboration really is in the forefront of a lot of CIOs' mind. So when we look at the data, you know, about 192 minutes per day is spent interacting uh, with email. So if you think about that, three hours of every workday is spent exclusively interacting uh, with customers, with your coworkers, with partners in email. And compare that to only maybe an hour a day total minute on the phone, you know, 30 minutes a day uh, engaging in, in text messaging of some sort, 
and then almost two hours a day engaged in kind of, kind of social media. But the important thing to remember is that email is still king here. So email is still the most preferred form of communication in an enterprise. You know, 58% of managers said that email is their first preferred form of communication there. And then the trend is that, that a lot of that's moving to the cloud. The cloud enterprise uh, messaging kind of platforms are being adopted. And they are being adopted, but an interesting takeaway is it's, it's much slower than any of the analysts uh, ever um, predicted. It seems that a lot of people do want to move to the cloud, but they also want to keep uh, a lot of that communication on-premise. So let's talk about some of the current market trends that are going on in collaboration. So we just talked about that hosted email and kind of cloud uh, trend that is going on. So we, we know that people are increasingly uh, adopting a kind of hosted email solution and platform, uh, a cloud SaaS solution, um, and, they're, and they're doing that to try to reduce uh, management costs. And then uh, we saw that increasing amount of time spent in engaged in social media. So they're looking for a way to bring that social channel into their enterprise uh, environment. In other words, doing some sort of social collaboration in that kind of metaphor, um, a way to share files that's a little more dynamic perhaps than email. Of course, we have that, that the trends of there needs to be more security around email. Uh, there's been data leaks. Uh, there's inbound traffic, we've got, you know, phishing campaigns going on, we've got uh, malware, ransomware, all of that's going on. So there has been an increased focus on the amount of security going on around email. And then one of the largest ones is that kind of anywhere access. Uh, businesses today expect that they can access their email anywhere uh, from any device. Uh, at any time in a way that is engaging to them so they can do work from any place at any time. Uh, it's 24 hours almost. So let's talk about how MicroFocus collaboration kind of helps with that. So we already saw that stat that 58% of managers still want to have uh, email as a preferred way of communicating. So they're looking for a solution that's secure, that's very cost effective, and that they have some sort of control over, that their own ITs have, have IT teams have control over. And of course, they expect that to uh, deliver email, some sort of scheduling or calendar, uh, some sort of social interaction, whether that's through instant messaging or, or, or some other sort of communication going on. And then they expect that to happen uh, across multiple desktop platforms and also from any mobile device. What's interesting on the collaboration side of things is there is a huge focus here. So 98% of executives cite that the lack of collaboration or ineffective communication is actually a source of workplace failure. So this is in the top forefront of, of CIO minds that they have to have a way to, to communicate better, to collaborate better in their, in their enterprise. And that needs to be both with internal uh, coworkers and teams internally, as well as bringing in external people, uh, partners, et cetera, so they have a whole collaborative environment where they can constantly share information. So around that, you know, we'd like to talk about enterprise messaging. So what is enterprise messaging, really? Well, the first thing that enterprise messaging is providing is that secure collaboration, where you can get your email, your instant messaging, that kind of scheduling that you need, a way to manage people that you're constantly in contact with, a way to manage tasks uh, that need to get done to accelerate projects. And then all of that needs to be available some way across mobile devices and multiple desktops uh, for that worker, which is no longer in the office. 
So what are end users looking for? So they want to be as productive as possible. They want that choice and flexibility. Um, but they also want that in a, in a way that, that's modern looking, that's got a fresh look and feel, that has new metaphors for the ways they want to communicate. So they're expecting email, calendar, and social interaction. Again, they want those desktop and mobile uh, things. And then what is IT looking for? So they want administration to be easy. They want new streamlined web interfaces that they can access from uh, mobile devices because even the admin is no longer in the office all the time and doesn't have access to physical machines. So they, they need to be able to do that remote administration. And then they're looking for choice and flexibility. In other words, I've got Active Directory. If I'm coming from Heritage Nobel, I've got eDirectory. I need to be able to run on multiple operating systems and platforms. And they want that latest technology. So, you know, support for 64-bit, you know, multiple desktop operating systems, browsers, and mobile devices. So we have all of that going on. And then for decision makers, what are they looking for? Again, they want their workers to be productive. They still want that choice and flexibility with really they're looking for a low total cost of ownership for their solution. And then they want that relevant technology that really drives their business. So not only the support for the latest devices, uh, but the potential to move to the cloud so I don't have uh, as many risks there and, and can control my costs. They want that worry-free security, and they're also looking for ways to communicate uh, in, new, in new ways that their own coworkers want. So again, all that cost-effective, those multiple desktops, and that way to collaborate. So let's talk about GroupWise, and that's what's in enterprise messaging, providing that secure collaboration. GroupWise, it's platform and directory agnostic, they have benefits, so you can either be on-premise or in the cloud now. And then they have a coexistence solution. In other words, I have multiple different types of email systems. I've got Exchange. I also have GroupWise because of a merger. Can those systems work together? Let's quickly talk about the latest version of GroupWise, which is GroupWise X18. So what's exciting about this is it's a new version. So for existing customers, that resets the, the what's called the product life cycle. And that means you're getting another five years of, of guaranteed support around the product. Um, and, and that's a good thing for all our existing customers. Uh, one of the new things is an integrate group-wise messenger in administration. So for those who are in the know about that product, uh, to run the uh, Nobel Messenger was still based on console one and was e limited to e-directory, so you had to have e-directory. All of that has disappeared. Now you can administer uh, Messenger directly from the GroupWise interface. Uh, it works with Active Directory. You don't need console one anymore. And then we keep on uh, having deeper integration with Filer. Uh, to reduce that kind of email storage that, that's going on. So it's very common that people email files back and forth. You may be storing multiple, multiple copies of the same file in different locations across, across your message stores. Uh, with integrating with Filer, you can cut down on that and have uh, a single instance of the file on Filer that people can email the reference back and forth and they can even edit and and you can assign rights, all of that directly through GroupWise now. The nice thing is, is to go to GroupWise 18, if you're current on your maintenance, uh, there's a no-cost upgrade to that. And one of the new features that we're adding is what's called social threading or conversation threading. So rather than having replies to an email come in as, as new and separate email that continuously fills up your, your email box, uh, all those replies simply roll up to the original message and you're notified about new responses by a badge uh, notification that comes up and shows you that there are new messages and new replies going on. 
and it surfaces that, that original message to the top, so you have access to that whole detailed conversation that's going on through email um, right in your inbox without having to deal with, with potentially hundreds of different replies coming in. And the nice thing about GroupWise 18 is, is that it is available now. So I want to talk about some of the additional benefits for GroupWise uh, through entitlements. And a lot of you already know this, but if you're current on your GroupWise maintenance, what that means is you get access to Instant Messenger or the Nobel Messenger, oh, sorry, it's now called MicroFocus Messenger product, um, which gets you that safe, secure corporate instant messaging uh, based on your, your uh, entitlements in your email system. And then, of course, we have the GroupWise Mobility Service. So that's uh, delivering uh, the business email to all your mobile devices. So if you're current on your, your maintenance, you get access uh, to those. You're entitled to those uh, at no charge. Now, one of the trends that's happening is, is that kind of increased demand for social interaction uh, in the enterprise based on uh, social media uh, norms and, and the way people communicate through social media. So chat-based teamwork allows for that communication in real time through kind of a chat-based framework where you can share files, you can help track changes on all the projects that you're working on, and that's all being delivered through a single interface. And that's called group-wide teamwork. So it is that chat-based workspaces. It allows for enhanced productivity. Um, I'm going to show you a demo in the, for that right now. But one of the things I want to emphasize is it actually works with your email, so it's not a replacement for your email, um, because we saw how, how important email was. Uh, we're not trying to replace email here, but we're giving access to, to GroupWise uh, teamwork directly in uh, GroupWise to enhance that kind of team collaboration. So people have the option if they're in their email and you get a new uh, chat going on through GroupWise Teamworks. It appears right there in your email interface. You don't have to even leave that. You can just access what's going on right there. And the nice thing about GroupWise Teamworks is we've got that uh, web and mobile access interface so you can access it through iOS and Android. There are apps out there to, to access it. You can also do a, a web interface into it. And I want to stress that that GroupWise Teamworks is only available uh, in MicroFocus Enterprise messaging. So it's not a standalone product that you can buy. Uh, the only way to get access to GroupWise Teamworks is to upgrade to enterprise messaging. So let me quickly switch over here and kind of give a very, very quick demo of how you would interact uh, with Teamworks through a web interface. So hopefully I can do that. So let's just log in here as um, Robert Berry, who's one of our users. And we're going to just sign in. So right at first, when when one of your users accesses Teamworks for the first time, they're going to get a kind of overview of what Teamworks is all about. There's a video that can watch that. We're not going to go through that video, but I think it's very instructive. I think all of your users should, should when they first log in, watch that video. Um, but we're going to just skip that for now. So here I am as, as Robert Berry. I've just logged in. And I can see that I've got a notification of some sort. And so any new messages that comes up, uh, they can go in and anything that's new, they'll get a little badge here that says they've got some sort of notification. And then when they look at that notification, uh, might be a little laggy right here. Uh, it was attempting to tell them that they'd been added to the super secret project. And so when, when they log into that, you can see that John Smith has started this room and that this is some sort of super secret project that's going on and that 
John Smith is asking perhaps for what features are needed and what should the scope of the project be. So I'm going to try to respond to that. So I'm saying, you know, okay, John, glad you added me to this. What should the scope of this project be? So I'm going to reply to John Smith and say, um, I think we need a way to interact more socially. Still, there we go. So I'm going to just send that, and it and it goes in there. So what what happens is I'm sending a response. You can see that it kind of nests that, and then when John Smith, what happens is he just got a notification that that Robert Berry had responded. And that notification would come through on his mobile device. Uh, it come through if he's accessing through the, the a web interface, he would see that he has a notification. And then if he's in GroupWise uh, 18 and Teamworks is enabled there, he would see right in his GroupWise uh, that there's been a new response in, in GroupWise Teamworks. Now, so the nice thing about this is this is real time. John Smith doesn't have to be online, like in Instant Messenger, uh, for me to interact with him because it will happen directly on his mobile device and in his email, whether he's actually online in Teamworks or not. And so you might have noticed that that you can send files, so you can attach a, a file here and send that to John Smith. And then we can see here in the super secret room, uh, who are members. So I can see that, you know, my entire team, Danny is in here, Cecilia is in here, Ty and John. And the nice thing is, is if I want to set up, I'm just going to show you quickly. If I want to set up a room here, I can just call a room whatever I want it to be. So this is going to be like Teamworks demo room. I can add a quick room description about what this is all about. And then I have several options. So I can make that either uh, a public room or you can see I've also got the option to do a private room. So private rooms are only searchable and visible to people that you have invited to the room itself. So that's the way you can control if you're working on some sort of project that you don't want everyone to be able to see and interact with. Uh, you make it private and then you have to invite people and only people who are invited have access and can see that the room even exists. Uh, but for this one, yeah, let's keep it private and I'll hit OK. Then you can see that I've got options on how I'm going to be notified. So I can say, notify me of everyone's direct reply, you know, send me an email about that or nothing. And then I just got a, a choice of members I want to add. And then this hooks into your corporate directory um, that you're using a, as your identity source. So we're going to add, you know, Danny Tarbeck there. And then you just add people, and when you're done, you hit save. Now only Danny and I can see that room. And uh, But if you want to create public rooms, you can just go in there and you can create a public room, and then anyone who has access to Teamworks uh, on your corporate system and looks through the search function would be able to see that room and start to interact with it which is where you can have large, larger conversations uh, across your entire company. So that's, that's just a quick demo of Teamworks and kind of how it, it could be used in, in your enterprise, but it's a very social dynamic way for people in your business or, or your organization to create 
specialty rooms and teams that they can at, interact with in real time, even if you're offline. Um, and then you're getting those notifications on your on your web interface, through your mobile device, or, or through GroupWise, uh, if that's enabled. Uh, but you may have to be on GroupWise 18. With that, I'm going to turn the time over to back to Q, who can now tell you about some of the other uh, great features and capabilities of enterprise messaging. Before we go there, there are a few questions, Wes, that I think you could answer for us. Um, a lot of a lot of questions about Teamworks. That's great. Um, good to hear. Um, so, in what we're doing here is, and when you sent that message is um, back to when you were sending that message to John Smith, would he see that message from Robert Berry in his Groupwise inbox or in a Groupwise folder? Yes. Yes. So, so if if you're on Groupwise 18 and and your IT and email administrators enabled uh, Teamworks, Teamworks comes in as kind of a separate folder area inside. Uh, your email interface and you see that you get a notification up there that something has changed it does come in uh, right there and so he, he will be able to see that okay uh, let's that's, see oh. that's what happens when you enable that email response oh going back to uh, microfocus instant messaging um, besides being integrated into groupwise administrator will there be other updates such as the ability to paste pictures clips media um, that kind of thing. Uh, so right now we're kind of reserving that that functionality of attaching files and media uh, for Teamworks as a separate value proposition. And so right now my understanding is that there's not a lot of uh, emphasis on expanding that into a messenger. So. The, the value prop around Novell Messenger is that if you're online and enable your online presence, you're there and people can interact with you. Uh, if it gets down to attaching files and and, and sharing, you know, video clips and, and stuff like that, all that kind of development is being currently pushed into Teamwork. All right, great. Uh, let's see, what server platform is supported for Groupwise 18? Uh, server platform on the back end is is uh, SUSE Linux and um, uh, Windows Server, if if I remember correctly. But those are the, the two platforms that you can use on the back end. Um, this is a good one, and I this is we're working towards this. What about archiving for IAM and Teamworks? This is something we're working on. Um, I'm going to be touching on the archiving in just a moment, but this is something that's coming. We do absolutely want to be able to archive that, especially with this enterprise messaging uh, uh, bundle. Okay, and then um, just kind of a high level, what's the difference between uh, Messenger and Teamworks? Uh, yeah, so Messenger, unless you've enabled a way to save uh, the conversation, uh, the conversation disappears uh, when you're done with it. And of course, you can always save those. And then if you were originally involved in that conversation uh, and it's saved, uh, you can go back and look at your conversation history there. However, when you're starting a group chat and you add someone new, they do not have access to everything that's going on that has gone on before. So, so the nice thing about Teamworks is I've started a room, I've gotten a new team member, I need to get them up to speed. I add them into Teamworks and they have access to the entire history of that room. So they can follow the conversations, they're automatically added to it, and you don't have to be online uh, so your presence, you can show that you're online there. Um, but if I'm not online and someone needs to send me a message, they just type it in there. If I've got my mobile on me, it just pops up. Bung, here I have a message, I know. Uh, if I'm offline and I don't have instant messenger on on my phone, you can't get in touch with me. You have to send me an email. So that's just a few of the differences there. Okay, uh, really quick. Can you quick message an individual through Teamworks without creating a room, kind of as an I am replacement instead of using both? Uh, no, you cannot. So, you, so the the metaphor to this one is is all about conversations that I'm having, and so you have to start a room and and be added to it or join a room. Uh, you just can't 
directly instant message someone. That that's the use case for instant messenger. Okay, and there are a few questions here about pricing and, and cloud options. Those are things that we'd have to, uh, I could follow up with you. I do wonder if, and this one may, we may not have the answer to this one either, but just in case, Wes, if you do, it's if there's an easy upgrade path from the open work group suite with GroupWise and have Retain to enterprise messaging. Uh, yes, there is. So you'd have to work with your uh, sales reps about that, but there are upgrade paths uh, from strictly having a Heritage Guava product like Retain, uh, also upgrade paths if you have GroupWise into enterprise messaging, and also another upgrade path uh, if you have Open Work Group Suite and want to move up to enterprise messaging. Each one of those, of course, have separate price points. Uh, we do take into account uh, if you've already paid maintenance and you want to do in the middle of the maintenance cycle, you know, how to work that all out. Um, but there are upgrade paths from any existing collaboration product up, up to enterprise uh, messaging. They say, and we understand not talking about pricing, but is the cloud offering currently? Uh, yes, it is. And so talk to your, to your uh, sales rep. If, if you need to move to the cloud and that's the direction you, uh, you want to take, talk to your sales rep. The, the cloud offering is available. Let's, uh, let's move on for just a minute and I'll get to the um, other pieces of enterprise messaging and then um, based on time we'll try and get to all these questions that we have um, thanks everyone for for putting these in it's really good um, uh, really really interactive and, and we're glad that you could all be here and, and ask these questions this is really really good we're exciting for uh, we're excited for enterprise messaging perfect so we've talked about um, the the you know, the wonderful offering, which is enterprise messaging, how it works with uh, as an email solution and the teamwork solution, which is or both amazing collaboration solutions. And of course, now let's move on and talk about some of the other products that are included in uh, this enterprise messaging product. And one of them, of course, is archiving. So enterprise messaging includes complete and compliant archiving. And so included with the offering is email archiving, the ability to archive those group wise messages within um, what most of the people on this call would know as retain. So retain is going to be included in enterprise messaging um, to be able to archive email. Um, with the archiving piece, there are search and e-discovery tools that are included, and this solution can be expanded to include social media and mobile archiving. And as was asked, yes, we're working towards uh, adding features into the archiving piece where it can and archive Teamworks, where it can archive um, IM. And of course, there was a question there about legal holds. That's all going to be part of that as well um, once that integration is in there because um, the archiving piece does have litigation tools. It does have uh, litigation holds. It has e-discovery tools. So an organization, when implementing enterprise messaging, they will archive all their email to begin with. That email archive includes um, those search tools. It includes the ability to place litigation holds, redaction, and it has the one central interface for being able to archive all information and being able to access that. Um, a little bit more about uh, this, the, the unified archiving of that's offered with enterprise messaging. Of course, it out of the box, it comes with that archiving of the email portion of enterprise messaging, but additional add-ons would be mobile, social media, and other platforms. Um, some things to really take note of that make this archiving solution different is that ability to access the archive in many different ways. There's the web interface, and there you can search and, and perform e-discovery from there. There's an email plugin. There's a mobile app and an offline viewer to be able to allow users to be able to access their archive. Obviously, an archive is, is important to have for compliance reasons and for data management, but if you can't easily get to your data, you know, it's not quite a full, complete archive. And so that's an important part of archiving is being able to access your data. And one of the things that really makes this archiving solution different is those built-in e-discovery tools, that ability to search, to, to redact, to place those litigation holds, place those legal holds um, directly from within the archive without having to have a separate, a separate solution. Um, here's an example of that email plugin. Uh, so in, in GroupWise, you simply um, 
install that plugin. They can open the Retain Archive directly from the email system, uh, not having to go out to uh, the web browser to be able to do that. They can access their their uh, archive directly from there. So an end user can access their personal archive, um, and administrator accesses the entire archive. So what I want to do now is let's. I just want to show you really quick some some high level portions of um, of the archive in Retain. Um, if you got, if you want to play with this, just know that this is something that you can get to. If you just go to retain.guava.com, uh, you'll be able to access this um, this demo system. Um, I'd ask that you don't do it right now, since uh, I'm jumping in there. <laughs> we don't want them, all of us in there. Um, but the administration of Retain is quite easy. Um, from here is where you'd set up the different modules. As I stated, the the email is going to be um, included with enterprise messaging but if you wanted to add other things like mobile com mobile communication archiving or social uh, media archiving you can add that as well um, some things that we talked about and I'll show is litigation holds and and uh, search but what I want to talk about for just a moment is this ability to um, delete this is an important part because um, as we know with GDPR coming up uh, you need to be able to make sure all your data is secure and private and um, retained gives the ability to do that by making sure that data stays secure and fulfills those requirements within GDPR but there's also a portion of uh, GDPR that talks about the right to be forgotten. So if somebody requests that, you need to be able to, to remove their information and purge that from your system. And, and within Retain, you have that ability to um, go into uh, Retain and easily delete a mailbox, delete a person directly from there. And all you have to do that is from here in mailbox deletion, make it straightforward and easy for you to be able to do that. So just to talk a little bit more about Retain, um, as I stated, a user can browse their, their personal archive. Here's an example of a mobile archive. Um, I'm going to change this over. Let's look at, a, at that GroupWise system. Let me grab one that will work here. Um, they can view their... This particular one doesn't have anything in there. That's okay. But they can view their mailbox. They'll be able to see it replicates over their mailbox structure. So any folders and then the messages that are in those folders will be able to be browsed. And so in, um, depending on the rights that are given, an end user can view their, their own personal archive. And then an administrator, of course, can view any mailbox that's being archived. And they can place litigation holds, tag messages, forward them, export them, restore them back to the live uh, mailbox. And once again, as I talked about, the power of a of a good archiving solution is being able to get to your data obviously you need to have that in there but to be able to get that so that's where um, retain can really shine is that it has those built-in search and e-discovery tools so as a search is done um, there is um, suggestions we like to call it a Google like search meaning that it's Retain is going to look into the archive and it's going to see um, what is in there and suggest things that are in the archive so that when you're doing a search, it makes it even that much more straightforward. And then the items that you're searching are going to be um, in the, the search results and they're going to be highlighted. Um, so let's just um, pick an item and search it. You can see how fast that came across. We got 27,000 hits that quick. Um, you can see that it gave us 1,100 pages of results. and the power of Retain is that with the indexing engine, all these items are indexed and readily available. So I can get to that last page that fast. You, did, you saw there was no buffering, no loading. I got to that last page really quick, and I was able to get to all messages that are archived. Um, obviously, I probably don't want to have to sort through all of these 27,000. So I can, um, I can now break that down and say, OK, I only want to see uh, mail messages. Um, that brought it down a bit. Um, I only want to see um, received items. That's bringing it down as, as well. Um, so, and then I can even do a date range. I could take that down even further to really make that so that you have much, that you can drill down and to see what the messages are. Um, you could say, okay, I only want to see mail. I only want to see BBM messages. I only want to see phone call logs. That's the power of this. Um, of this solution is that you can quickly and easily get to the data that you need um, when you need it. And of course, an end user can search their personal archive and the administrator can search the entire archive. 
So the other thing I wanted to show as well is that um, you can also do advanced search where you can do uh, Boolean terms. Um, you can add phrases onto there. You can do an and, or um, you can even use regex terms, regular expressions. So the advantage here, once again, of the retain archive included in enterprise messaging is that ability to quickly and easily get to your data, be compliant with regulations that require you to archive and uh, be able to place those litigation and legal holds. And that's all included in the enterprise messaging offering. So let's continue on and talk a little bit about some of the other pieces of enterprise messaging. We have also have unparalleled security um, with inbound and outbound protection, antivirus, anti-spam, protection against cybercrime, DDoS and, and DOS protection, and then of course protection for the MTA, POA, web access, and mobility. And so when we're talking about enterprise messaging, um, and with GroupWise, Enterprise Messaging Security, which was uh, formerly known as Guava and is now known as Secure Messaging Gateway, is the only solution that's actually built into GroupWise. So it protects the MTA, the POA, it protects web access, it protects mobility service. I mean, it includes that inbound and outbound protection, that antivirus, anti-spam, cybercrime protection. Some other things that enterprise messaging security includes is as an add-on, you can actually add on the ability to monitor and block illicit and pornographic images and videos um, through Image Analyzer. And of course, a, a big item that needs to be protected for your organization is these um, distributed attacks, right? Those distributed denial of, of service attacks or the denial of service attacks that could happen. And uh, the security and enterprise messaging protects from that to make sure that your email system stays up. And of course, with antivirus, it's zero hour antivirus protection for both inbound and outbound, and then multi layer spam defense. So that means that unwanted traffic stays off your system, but the stuff that you want to come through will come through by having those databases updated regularly. Um, here's an example of how easy it would be to configure your um, your policies for being able to guard against viruses or spam or or um, or those attacks as well and and so here you can see I'm, I'm not going to demonstrate this today but here's just a screenshot today of how you could uh, create a, an anti-spam filter um, how you would route that to make sure that your system is set up to be protected from spam from viruses and um, I would encourage you, we do have other webinars as well that, that focus on each portion of enterprise messaging, um, and you can go out and, and take a look at those and, and view each portion there. But just know that is where we're trying to give you that power in enterprise messaging is to be able to have these solutions that are proven um, that protect your email system that archive your email system and then we're going to talk here about making sure that your email system stays up no matter what and that's with the disaster recovery solution with enterprise messaging um, for those of you who are familiar this was the reload product um, offered by by guava but now it's included in enterprise messaging to allow you so that if your if your live email system goes down this can serve as immediate backup and failover. So that makes means that your system stays up and running even if um, your something happens to your live server. Um, the disaster recovery feature in there can protect against that. Also, it's a backup solution so that um, if you have an end user that say they accidentally deleted an email <laughs> or an email was lost, you can immediately restore that back to the live system as well. So you can restore an entire mailbox, you can restore um, an entire server, you can even restore an email. Um, that's the power of this disaster recovery solution. Um, and this is kind of a, a quick and view of kind of the how you would see that is that you have the, the enterprise messaging email so we're talking group wise running on Linux or Windows it backs up to the disaster recovery system which is taking periodic backups it's going to take less disk space than a standard backup and of course it can be accessed via the email client um, and then it allows you to easily switch over to disaster recovery mode and recover mail and go back to normal access um, a couple of things to be aware of um, 
like I said, uh, disaster recovery can serve as an enterprise messaging email system. Um, generally, we say for up to two weeks, but it can actually be used for even longer than that uh, if, if you need to take that time to restore your live email system. It includes those hot backups that immediate recovery and full restoration. So as it's run, so let's say that your system goes down and you have that backup, you can restore that backup back to the live system. Let's say your system goes down and you're fail, failed over to the disaster recovery solution. As you're, as you're using that as your live system, it will of course continue to keep those messages. And then once you get your live system back up and running, um, disaster recovery can restore all that, all those messages back to the to the live system. And of course, we like to call it push button disaster recovery because um, it's really quickly to get into disaster recovery mode and, and be able to run from there. Um, some other things too is there's smart purge integration for those of you who are familiar with that. Um, all the items are backed up. Items can't be purged until they are backed up and nothing can be purged from the backup. Okay, so there's some questions here that I want to answer because there's some good ones that I was just noticing here. Um, so DLP is something um, that's being asked about. When will that be offered? It is something that is in our roadmap. We are looking to integrate that. Um, so data loss protection at some point. Um, I don't have a date for that, but it is something we're looking towards. Um, does email security include outbound keyword encryption blocking? We do this today to protect protected health information. Um, that's something that uh, could be added on to um, the security piece, but that is not something that we have. But, th but we can integrate with encryption tools to be able to do that. One thing that is included in uh, the security for enterprise messaging is keyword scanning and monitoring. So you can actually monitor for certain content for certain keywords within um, messages that are coming in or going out and get alerts and block those. Um, but the encryption piece is not in there. So, okay, let's see some other ones here. There's some questions about licensing. Uh, once again, I'll, I'll have to, Daniel, I'll have to follow up with you on, on licensing there and how it would work for each piece. Um, okay. Uh, the question here, and Wes, you can probably jump in here, is when will Teamworks be available for download for enterprise messaging customers? I'm pretty sure that's available now, but I just want to make sure, Wes. Yeah, so if, if you buy enterprise messaging, uh, Teamworks is available now. Uh, we are we are currently working on on the download of a trial of that. That should be if it's not live today, then in the next week it it should be live. You would go to the enterprise messaging product site, uh, go to features, click on the the one about chat based teamwork, and then there will appear a download button. So you will be able to trial, uh, get a hold of a trial version of of Teamworks that way. Perfect. And let's see, um, I'm assuming that enterprise messaging is one complete package where we are currently a la carte if we are using groupwise retain and secure messaging gateway now. Yes, so that's the that's the great thing about this is that enterprise messaging is, is one complete product um, and there's some cost savings there too. If you're using groupwise retain and secure messaging gateway as separate solutions, if you come over and, and get this solution, it's going to save you some money and then you'll have one one package. Um, can groupwise disaster recovery replicate off-site? Absolutely. So, um, let's see. I, I thought I had a slide for that, but oh, here's a here's a screen grab of it. But um, you have the ability to replicate um, multiple instances. So you can have an on-site uh, disaster recovery server. You could have an offsite and you could have something in the cloud. Um, you could triple replicate that as well. Um, so giving you really full protection by being able to have um, that replication across the board. So know that if so, yeah, if there was ever a disaster where your on-site groupwise system uh, goes down, your enterprise messaging system goes down, you could fail over to the offsite or the cloud um, disaster recovery system. Um, and then will a live sync option for reload be available? Um, that's something that, that has been asked for and is in the works. So yeah, we have um, the, the 
hot backups are periodic, but being able to live sync back, that's something that's that's coming as well that we're looking towards. Um, will this work with Exchange Online? No, this is a this is a separate uh, solution to it, an Exchange Online solution. Okay. Oh yes, you're absolutely. Uh, Edward Ed mentioned that uh, HP. Um, with the acquisition of HP, there is an encryption solution. Um, it's called Secure Secure Mail. Um, that is something that we're working on, seeing how we can integrate that into Secure Messaging Gateway. Um, but there is a solution there for encryption, absolutely. Okay. Um, Groupwise Disaster Recovery is listed as DR Disaster Recovery and Backup. Does it replace current Groupwise backups? Um, no. It is not necessarily a replacement for groupwise backups. You can continue to use those, but because of the failover ability and that ability to backup and and restore even single messages, it, it adds value to your current groupwise backups. So it is something that um, you can you can use in addition, but it, it gives you that ability to have those hot backups and to fail over and be able to restore those single messages an entire post office or um, an entire mail mail system. Um, oh yeah, and yes, uh, it was Voltage Secure Mail. It'll it should be called in the future a Microfocus Secure Mail. Um, all right. Well, they are, we just renewed our licensing. Will there be an opportunity to convert to the new platform? Absolutely. Um, once again, uh, as a follow up to this, I would encourage you to reach out to your um, your microfocus representative. I think everyone here will be getting some sort of follow up as well um, so that they can give you more information on what it would take for you to move over to this platform um, with enterprise messaging um, and and how your licensing will work. Great questions. Thanks, everyone. This is this is really good. A few a few other things just to take note of really quick and then we'll finish up. We have five minutes <laughs> is there is a monitoring piece reporting, mailbox managing, and an auditing and oversight portion of enterprise messaging. Those were, once again, products that were brought in from, from Guava. I'm not going to touch too much on this, but um, there's comprehensible and uh, comprehensive and customizable reporting and monitoring. Um, I apologize that we kind of ran out of time here, but there's a lot to be able to monitor different data points within GroupWise um, and, and a dashboard to see alerts and performance indicators about what's going on in, in GroupWise. And then, of course, uh, mailbox management, uh, being able to, to have that enterprise mailbox management from one single um, location, all included in enterprise messaging. And of course, I want to hit hard on this um, is uh, you can deploy enterprise messaging as an on-premise solution or host it in the cloud. We have that availability for both, as Wes touched on. This is now available in the cloud, so if you're looking to move that route, you can. And of course, if you want to stay on-premise, that is available as well. And of course, enterprise messaging is available now. All the pieces are available to download to, to, to get going with enterprise messaging we encourage all of you to try it out um, to move up to that solution we we view it as an a great value and a great solution to be able to have that complete enterprise messaging solution um, and as i stated this has been recorded and there's been some questions to get a copy of the slideshow we'll make sure to make that available to you as well so everybody will get an email after this with some answers to your questions that we weren't able to get to and and that as well so um so we'll go ahead and uh, turn it back to Wes to finish up. Uh, thanks, everybody, <laughs> for your questions. Sorry we didn't get to all of them. Um, like I stated, we will uh, we will follow up with an email for this. And, and don't worry, we are going to have more webinars similar to this so that uh, we can make sure to get to uh, everything here. OK. So let's, let's talk about why evolving to enterprise messaging is a smart choice for you. So uh, we did a TCO comparison uh, to some of our competitors out there um, and other options that you might be thinking about. And as you can see, you know, enterprise messaging, either on-prem, doing some sort of upgrade, doing subscription model, uh, really is cheaper than uh, Exchange Server as, as a TCO. Um, 
either enterprise or, or standard versions, even moving to Office 365 uh, with those different plans, you can see the enterprise messaging is really a smart choice. Of course, uh, some people are considering moving to Google G Suite. Uh, it, they do have a lower cost, as you can see, but uh, some of the features there are, are just not available. That complete white paper is available for download uh, on our website. Just go out, fill out the form, and you can get a, a kind of detailed comparison between all those different offerings, and you can uh, see a little bit more about that, that total cost of ownership. Of course, you know, moving to GroupWise and keeping it on-premises, it still beats Exchange, uh, even Exchange kind of online. Uh, there's that three-year TCO. You know, it's 52% lower than Microsoft Exchange. So if you're if you're thinking about moving to Exchange or you have Exchange and want something that's uh, potentially just as feature robust but less expensive to own and, and operate, uh, you can see there's quite a bit of uh, cost savings there. There's also a white paper available for download on the GroupWise product site that, that you get complete uh, information about that entire uh, study that was done there. So in conclusion, just kind of some key takeaways here. Enterprise messaging is really relevant to today's market, uh, challenges, and it's very important to microfocus. Um, it doesn't have to be one or the other. So, so you know, if you want on-prem, we have that. If you need to move to the cloud, we have the ability to do that now. Uh, enterprise messaging is very flexible and it can deliver uh, what you need. So enterprise messaging also fully supports multiple desktop platforms and, and mobile platforms. So for your, your mobile worker, for the remote worker, uh, no matter how they want to access their email uh, from a mobile device or their, their platform of choice, there are options available uh, to you in enterprise messaging. And then uh, there is a robust partner community that can help uh, install and give you additional solutions around that that help solve some of those critical business problems that you might be having. And with that, we are at the end of our presentation and at the end of our time. Thank you so much for attending. Thanks, everyone. And look for that email with uh, further information and the recording. And I uh, hope to see you on the next one.